we're currently at uh, Camp Gruber, Oklahoma, conducting a uh, Homeland Response Force exercise to uh, test all our units to make sure that we're prepared for a, uh, any kind of domestic disturbance, chem chemical attack, or uh, anything that the communities might need our support. You know, our goals uh, in an exercise like this is to identify our weaknesses and capitalize on our strengths, and then make sure that we uh, document that and uh, hand off those lessons learned to the other HERFs. This was an exercise where we simulated uh, showing up to a tornado that had touched down and there were some collapsed structures and there were uh, casualties walking around. There were some that were walking and, and able to you know, kind of help themselves to our decon line um, and then there, there were others that were trapped in structures that we assisted in, in locating and uh, getting them out to safety. Recon is our first team that goes out and they are the ones that would, you know, basically kind of size up the situation, let us know what we would be walking into. Uh, we have different skill sets, different specialties. We have teams that are specialized in breaching and breaking, uh, shoring, uh, ropes mission. Everyone here on the team, we know our job, uh, but there's uh, everyone can always learn. This was our first day actually in the exercise, so we had uh, trainers and instructors that were uh, just giving us different tips on, on how we could improve. So we're building on our knowledge and, uh, and, and just getting better every day. Uh, that's our log in, log out section. Uh, that's, they're going to catalog and record information on the patient, collect any valuables uh, for storage, things like that, check for identification. Uh, but the big picture there, the, the important part of that is uh, accountability. So we, we know how many patients we've taken in and how many we're putting out. Depending on if they're, uh, if they're walking wounded and they can move under their own power uh, versus if they're a non-ambulatory casualty. Uh, if they're ambulatory, they'll be directed uh, into an undress tent. Uh, where they will, you know, where our personnel will sort of coach them through the process of uh, disrobing, so that will remove about 80% of the contamination. From there, they'll be directed into a shower tent. It's uh, where more of our personnel will coach them through the uh, decontamination process. Uh, there are sprayers along the wall, so there's constant mist being uh, being projected into that tent. As a non-ambulatory casualty, they'll be on a backboard. Uh, the setup is essentially the same as the ambulatory tent, only there is a series of rollers that run the length of the line. Um, our personnel will be directly involved in their decontamination at this point. Uh, in the undress tent, a series of safety scissors and safety cutters will be used to uh, disrobe the casualty. Uh, they'll move into the, they'll be rolled into the shower tent, uh, at which point our personnel will go through a, a standard procedure to uh, spray the entirety of the casualty and the backboard to make sure they're not tracking the contaminant further into the, uh, the clean area. One of the first things we establish is our hot zone triage because we as medical, we have 47 personnel but we're divided in almost every element. So we have 10 people that immediately go to search and extraction. Those um, medics would go down range and they begin with the actual search and extraction teams of the Army Guard, going into the rubble piles, checking for patients, assessing them, triaging them in their full suits and gear, and then getting them transported back up to the hot zone triage. It could be anything, it's kind of an all hazards response, so it could be anything from a biological to a chemical agent, it could be a blast injury, it could be crush injuries. The scenario we're working with today is actually a tornado, it could be a, any number, it could just be walking wounded with bumps and abrasions, all the way down to very severe patients that are medically unstable. The makeup is very real, it looks exactly like what you would see in a blast or a crush injury, fallen structure, so the doctors and physicians, um, the physicians, the nurses, the medics, they're able to get that real sense of realism. Even though they're reading their patient's condition from a card, the patients are acting out, they're yelling, they're carrying on just to match what their injuries are. So the role playing is excellent. It gives that, that layer of chaos that you have to be able to account for and be used to working with. Our job is to secure the entire footprint. So we have people out in the uh, suits and what we'd call the hot zone helping uh, keep uh, order and a good flow of traffic coming through the gate. 
We also have uh, four people out there helping the aid and litter team, so helping the medical personnel with the uh, influx of uh, civilian traffic. We also have uh, people in what we'd call the cold zone patrolling and make sure there's no issues, just keeping security, keeping order. We have people located at each of the ECPs to keep the traffic flow, keep people out that don't need to be in, let the people that do need to come in. It's a very small select that do this mission, but it's an important one. And uh, with the uh, National Guard's visibility in the community, this just enhances it and uh, it, makes a, it, it makes it a very viable mission.